we've been talking about the subtlety of these paintings on this side of the room, so we've turned the camera and um, and we were actually talking about them while yeah I was moving the camera around. So what struck me about these, and I don't think I ever even saw pictures of these until you sent the pictures and this time because I, I had seen some of these others, but I was so surprised and I was like, wow, these are really really different. And then I got to thinking because what I was familiar with is your your um, the ones over the last five or six years where they're uh, rectangular forms, but they're sort mm -hmm. of staggered right. out. And, and I realized, oh, these really kind of have that same well, there's a uh, body aspect. Well, there's a body of work in between, the, a few bodies of work, but there's yes. a body of work called Quarto, yes. which I don't know if you've seen, but it, it followed this work, and they were very, very subtle, um, almost monochromatic, Exactly. Four, then, four shades of one color. Right. And the, what was, <coughs> what, so what grabbed me about, because I was init initially more familiar with those current ones, then as I was looking at your book, I realized the mm, connection. There's a trend. Yeah. But yeah, um, and it's the subtlety, but you do it differently here. And so um, these are really low values. And, mm. and so they're almost all, I mean, you said of the mm. same value, but they're all the same value, but really it's kind of all shades of one all, all, all hues of one color <laughs> yeah and so um so it's so subtle but you had made a comment though i think about earlier about the you know are they really inter interlocking or whatever and you just thought of them as just forms but then you said except for the darker ones what were you thinking there because i wanted you to kind of follow up on that oh now. um actually i was talking about the the light one with, with the re the light and dark one with the really dark central square. Oh right, because yeah. that does throw the form off. I mean that I, I it was, makes the white one just sort well, of stand I, out. Well, I just was I was just working so much with balance and all these other yes. ones, and that one is definitely, you know, dynamic, right? <clears throat> as opposed to really symmetrical. And these are all really symmetrical in a way. Oh yeah, no definitely. <clears throat> and that's the other thing too, though, that I still think is is very. Um, interesting and different is the fact that these are so um, canvas filling in exactly these two shapes. And um, the other thing too that strikes me is there's some that are square. The black, white, and gray is square. This is square, but yet they create a horizontal, but most of no, them typically are rectangles. <laughs> And so, and in a horizontal format. There really for, is no square painting here. Not the finished product, but this. Oh, I see the, in, yes. the inner. Yeah, the uh, inner. I, I get, okay, yeah. Some yeah. of them are square, but most right. of them are not. Right. The little blue and black one over there that I think is in the camera right now are vertical, but only slightly vertical, but they're still creating an overall horizontal. Um, what was sort of the thought about that? Um, you were consistent pretty much, except for like this one and maybe one other vertical. Any particular thought? Are you talking about, about the, the, the third the, color? No, 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 no. The, just the compositions. Oh. Just uh, the fact that mm -hmm. there are these squares and rectangles, but the overall is rectangular. Is there. Right. Were you thinking landscape or. No, no, no. I, I don't think at all when I paint, honestly. <laughs> I don't. I mean. Okay, erase that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't. I mean, I, I, have, I have some kind of a vision, and I do a lot of studies, but really I'm seeing something. So it's pretty much whatever you kind of laid down initially, you sort of stick with and that. I, yeah, and, and I okay. don't move. In these paintings, this is different from the way I'm working now, but in these paintings, I had an exact drawing, and I executed it as well as I could. Mm -hmm. And I, I had the colors figured out, and I had the forms figured out, and all I wanted to do was get the materials to bend to my will and mm -hmm. make it the way I wanted to see it. And <clears throat> of course, it never was, ever. You, I mean, you can never match those two things. Right. But, um, but it was something that excited me. So that was it. But I, I don't think, uh, I don't have rational or uh, thoughts about painting. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I just don't. <laughs> it's not a crime. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, some, I just was kind of curious because they're so purposeful and seems an intentional. But, you know, back to the color, though, of these two. And, and, these and three. The, you know, well, there's several. Here. Yeah. Um, 
the subtlety. So I just got interested more and more. Um, I just got more and more interested in the possibility of close value, and I did some studies, and they got more and more interesting and more and more subtle. And I just started. I started sort of trying, trying to do it. And I think the red one in the, the red one in the very back, a dark red. This is probably one of the earlier of this attempt. Mm -hmm. So there's more contrast here. Yeah. And that and was a lighter value. Yeah, that was exciting to me. So I thought, oh well, you know, maybe I can push that a little bit. And they got there are other paintings that aren't in this show that are intermediary sort of. Mm -hmm. But and then they gradually got more and more and more subtle um, to the point that the last ones were almost monochromatic. Yeah, and it, it was fun, you know, I mean, I, I was excited about finding this third person, <laughs> this third um, color and how, how it, it just floats around and it is the same color in every case. I mean, there are only three colors in all these paintings. Right. So um, it, it was just a challenge to get a middle color that I could bring the light out of by what surrounds it. <clears throat> you know, I mean, it, it, it sort of is perfect, perfectly equal in value here, but here it's just slightly off, so mm -hmm. this dark blue pops it out a tiny bit, brings the light out of it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, in, in, in these, it, um, it becomes harder to see the actual form. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think we start when you look at it. You sort of start with the center, which has the highest yeah. contrast, and then the thing sort of unfolds. And one right. of the things that I was going toward was um, was I was working toward I think paintings that unfold in time as you're looking at them. You know, you just don't see it all at once. Well, and that's, I think, the thing with these is that you, mm -hmm. when you start looking at them and you, your eyes sort of adjust, and especially when you don't see the other ones. That's one reason why I put them the, in these bays. Yeah. Because it kind of blocks the peripheral. You're, you're, they're not too close. Mm -hmm. um, and you can really concentrate on them. The paintings over here, curatorially, um, sort of beg to the attention because of just the mm -hmm. color contrast. Mm -hmm. And so you sort of ignore the sort of more darker ones on the side. You don't even see the other ones really out of your peripheral vision when you look at these. But when you're looking at these, I can still even see that red one over there. But, um, well, but that's why I, I do this in yeah. these bays because it really blocks your vision. Because I think these really sort of beg to be isolated to, to contemplate because of the fact that there's just the, one thing is, and is also the, the color choice. It just, these are, as we were saying, these are not sort of, um, not that there's a normal color, but you know, these just, you, you know, you really can't place what in the world does that color yeah. relate to in nature. Yeah, so non-colors, right. Yeah, so it's almost uh, like, oh, okay, it must be like a, it's got some a, sort of jade or something. It's, so I was thinking, it's oh, it must got, be every, some sort it's of got everything in it, yeah. Yeah, and well, so. <clears throat> I wanted to say something about, um, ab about this development towards subtlety. And that is that uh, painting for me is, is so highly individual in that it, the way it's done, but the way it's viewed. And I think for every painting, um, there is something that, that what is exciting to me is when it unfolds in time to a single viewer. And that's one reason why I almost never do diptychs or anything, because to me it's the one painting and you get lost in it. I mean, you should be mm -hmm. able, it has to become its own point of reference rather than referencing something else. Exactly. So that's my love of painting is that it's an individual experience and that it unfolds in time and it has no outside point of reference. Well, and this gets back to... I'm not, a hist I'm not an art historian. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's not my point of view. Right. No, it's totally fine. Yeah. But it gets back to something, though, that I think very central uh, about your work is, is that you, you think of, you know, space. Mm -hmm. And again, that's yeah. sort of your relationship with Fleming and 
you know, all these other uh, people from uh, in Viador from, you know, Park Place, because they were mm -hmm. all interested in space. Mm -hmm. You're coming at it, though, from a different angle, I think. They were coming mm -hmm. at it as, is there a potential of like a fourth dimension? They were much inspired, very much inspired by vector geometry and Buckminster mm -hmm. Fuller. And, right. And these complexities of how do you show, you know, you know, third dimension or three dimension or fourth, possibly a fourth dimension in, in a two dimensional plane or in sculpture or whatever. Right. So, but you come at space from a different angle, I think, from what I've been reading about you and trying to, to uh, just from our different conversations over the years, is you have this notion of an interior and, and sort of an exterior space. So this is like exterior space, you're producing something, but it's coming out of your interior space of you. <laughs> right. And what you're trying to do is connect with somebody else's, the viewer's interior space. And I think because these are so subtle and they're potentially more reductive because there's not mm. these high contrast they're more complex mm -hmm. yeah and that's so true. i think what it does it is, is yeah. you you engage with these more because you're really trying to figure out why you know what is this about mm -hmm. you know is there some hidden meaning here I, is there something metaphorical about these and that's why i posited is she trying to get across like it's two people it's my left brain my right brain you know or what is it i mean because then it almost said because it's like we just said the first thing you're drawn to is these two central bars mm -hmm. they're not bars they're part of these squares but you don't see that because they're so subtle mm -hmm. and then when you keep looking at them you start and your eye sort of works around it you realize ah, oh, okay there's these interlocking sort of rectangles and you know it's and so i think it, it these probably, because when you look at the ones that are more colorful, um, you relate to the color immediately because they're largely primaries. So you immediately get it. There's no thought there that you mm -hmm. have to put into it. And the, the contrasts are there and you, and you see basically that they are sort of interlocking. But these are very, very subtle. And so I think in many ways, if I'm understanding correctly how you think about things in terms of ex internal and external spaces and connecting with people, I would argue these, and then the little brown and, and sort of black one over there, there's one over here that's even more subtle that we'll get to when we look at your newer painting. Um, but I think these are more successful, I would argue, at engaging a viewer for a longer time. I think mm -hmm. these take a lot longer to adjust to mm -hmm. and to then start thinking about it. But I also think these are more transcendent because of the subtlety. Mm -hmm. There's no entertainment. <laughs> right. it's, it's really it's total engagement. Mm -hmm. if, if you're engaging, yeah, you're at engaging. All. If you, yeah. <laughs> you know, if I you, mean, if somebody even, you know, yeah. it's not like at an art fair where people just kind of breeze well, by. A lot of people walk <laughs> by. Yeah, but when you're in a gallery or in a quiet space, you can kind of spend time engaging with mm -hmm. them. And I think it does because, mm -hmm. like I said, these are the ones when I said they, they kind of range from bright and sort of upbeat to sort yeah, of are. you know sort of neutral, kind of meditative, zen-like. It's almost like a you know, a, a, you know, meditation center right. or something. But these go beyond that. These mm -hmm. get moody. Mm -hmm. And like I said, these odd colors, what happens to me is I think dystopian because they're just, they're such odd colors. I can't relate to anything natural in my life about them, you know? But it really makes me want to keep looking at them, you know? And it's, what's, it's interesting because it's just not like a typical color choice. Well, they're, these are colors that exist all the time around us. These are chromatic neutrals. And if you especially turn the lights out, mm -hmm. if you look out at those buildings out there, if you look in any corner where there's a shadow, but if you, if you turn the lights out at night and start looking at, build, looking at anything and really wait for your eyes to adjust, you will see colors. You will see color like that. Yeah, very subtle. So mm -hmm. that that's, has a and that's quality actually a good of beauty point. These me. actually sort of feel like looking at something in moonlight. Yeah. Something that has I color. painted them in moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. <laughs> We're really unpacking this now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think uh, your, your sort of interior, exterior space, I think these are, mm -hmm. this is, when I looked at these and kept trying to figure out what are these about, you know, sort of mm -hmm. thing, and I realized okay. these, I keep coming back to these and re-engaging with them, and I think that's what it is to me, is I think mm -hmm. these are the ones that are more enigmatic. Mm, they are, yeah. And, and sort of, uh, it, because the subtlety um, is, is just so... Um, it's a different thing. Purposeful it, and interesting. It, yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, that's interesting. I'm glad we actually talked about that because um, that is, uh, yeah, it, moonlight and colors and how they look in, in the dark. That's a really good point. All right.